Hello everyone, I hope you're all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming at you with our weekly Manx Monday Q&A. Before we get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently rocking, and that is the Louis Vuitton Neverfull MM in the Demi Azure print. Uh, all right, so grab your coffee, grab your tea, let's start your workout, let's go to work. Whatever it is that you do, come join me because we have some awesome topics to cover today. Starting with the first question, it was actually the most requested topic for Minx Monday, and that is uh, my thoughts or my opinions on the Louis Vuitton collaboration with Jeff Koons. Uh, so I had, I think I had maybe 15 or 16 people ask if we would discuss that, so I figured it would be uh, the best way to just start off this week. Uh, now when it comes to the Jeff Koons and Louis Vuitton collaboration, uh, Jeff Koons, who is a well-known artist that has been in the art world uh, for a very long time, uh, collaborated with Louis Vuitton, and they brought, um, they brought an array of different handbags and small leather goods and um other accessories that combine um art with fashion now I was taken back by this collection. I was taken back because it wasn't what I was expecting to see, uh, especially from all the teasers that Louis Vuitton put on their social media. Uh, and I feel that the best way to look at this is kind of like devil's advocate. I have to play devil's advocate when I talk about this collection because it would be easy to write off the collection and say this, that, and the other, but I feel that there's other aspects about it that are important to, uh, to take into consideration. So this collection is definitely not going to be for everyone. And, um, even though it personally wouldn't be something that I would ever add to my collection because it's just not my style. Uh, again, I feel that there are aspects of it that have to have to be brought, you know, have to be brought to light. Uh, now, this collection, I feel that it's kind of a way of, you know, Jeff Koons has always been one for to push the envelope, and that's exactly what he did with this collection. Uh, Louis Vuitton even knew uh, from what I was reading, they knew that they were going to get a lot of, um, you know, a lot of people discussing it and a lot of people not, you know, not liking this collection, but they went ahead and did it anyways. Now, uh, like I said before, Jeff Koons is, is known for pushing the envelope. He's known for pop art, and there's something to be said about pop art. It's, it's fleeting. It's something that... Uh, isn't for everybody. They're statement pieces. Uh, but I feel that, I feel that it's a way of, of bringing art to the masses in another form of art, which is the handbag. And uh, I feel that a lot of people will either love this collection, I think you'll either love it or you're going to hate it. It's either one or the other. And, uh, you know, like I said before, it's pop art. It's just kind of, it's, it, it is what it is. It's, it's a way of just bringing, you know, the old with the new together, just combining it together. Now, personally, I prefer to see these masterpieces that they ended up, um, that they ended up putting onto these handbags. I'd rather see these masterpieces uh, you know in a museum because that's that's where they I feel that they belong I don't feel that they belong on a handbag I don't feel that they belong on a keep ball or anything like that for me it's about seeing the masterpiece it's about seeing the works of art the the contribution that these works of art have made to the art world and I just feel that it kind of takes away from the overall beauty of these of these of these works of art by being on a handbag, by being on, you know, on anything like that. So again, personally, it's not for me. I appreciate it. And uh, from what I read, it is actually not Nicolas Gisquier's, um, it wasn't his collaboration. It was actually with uh, Delphine Arnault, if I'm not mistaken, with Jeff Koons, because Jeff Koons uh, knows uh, the Arnaults. They've known him for quite some time. Uh, so he's getting, you know, poor Nicolas Gisquier, he's getting a lot, <laughs> a lot of hate on his Instagram for, for this collaboration, and it wasn't even his idea. Uh, but all of that aside, I feel that out of this entire collaboration, Collection, I feel that it'll look, you know, the 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 pieces might look better on the scarves and um, you know on the squares and and things like that. I think it'll look a lot better versus it being on a handbag or versus it being on a bag charm or anything like that but it is not for me. But whether you love the collection or whether you hate the collection, you have to we all have to admit that Louis Vuitton did something. They brought something to to you know to their clients to their customers and 
they are, I feel that they're going to get a lot of feedback on this as far as people going into the boutiques and checking them out. So let's say you hate, you, you know, you're just like, oh, this is horrible. This is not for me, blah, blah, blah. But you are so curious about it that you want to check it out at the boutique that it's getting you in the door. So in a sense, that's genius because they got you in the door. So they, they got you talking about the item. They got you talking about the brand. And while you go in there to check out the, the when you go in there to check out the, the collection, you might walk out with something else that will catch your eye, not necessarily from that collection. So that's genius. I have to hand it to them, you know, kind of like what they did with, with Supreme. But I just feel that it's... <sighs> The, the works of art have been around for so, so long. And I know there's a lot of people that don't know about, uh, that don't know about these artists and they don't know about these, um, you know, about these, these pieces that it's a way of, again, bringing it to, to, to the younger generation. And, uh, I do have to say that I love the fact that they have, uh, little bits and pieces of each, of each masterpiece inside of the handbag, kind of detailing it a little bit better and then talking about Jeff Koons as well. So you get to know, it's kind of like, uh, I believe that's what he said in his, um, in his Instagram, he said that it's a way of giving a little mini history lesson in each item by by them doing that and adding a little bit more to their um, to their to the bags. But a lot of people find that they're so gaudy; they look like souvenir pieces. Uh, and the fact that it has the you know the bold type on there, but that's a reflection of of Jeff Koons. That's who he is. It's incorporating his style and Louis Vuitton style together. So again, it's not for me. I do appreciate it, and I understand where Jeff Koons was coming from with this collaboration, uh, but it will definitely be an acquired taste. It will have to be someone who uh, either um, appreciates it for what it is, or maybe if they just want to add full-on variety to their collection because it is a limited edition collection. So um, I, I just thought that this was an interesting, uh, a very interesting uh, collaboration. Uh, like I said, it's not for me, but I would really absolutely love to hear your thoughts on the collection. I know a lot of people aren't uh, aren't happy about it. They think it's disgusting. They think it's this. They think it's that. But again, we have to. I feel that I I have to look at it with a different set of eyes. Um, I just can't write it off completely. So I would still love to hear your thoughts. So let me know in the comment section down below, and let's get to chatting about it. <laughs> Next question from Julia Shapak. Hopefully I said that correctly. I've wondered whether you felt any pressure to acquire new items because of your social media standing and channel. How do you handle that? So far it appears it's all very organic for you and that your videos coincide with your natural purchasing style and tastes, but thought I'd ask anyways. Wonderful question. And have I ever felt any pressure to acquire new items? Uh, I haven't. And I think that really comes from, uh, even before I had a YouTube channel, even before I had any type of social media, I used to get really carried away. There is something very exhilarating about buying a brand new item. Uh, and way back when I used to get carried away, like I mentioned, and I would buy things just to buy them, not because they suited my lifestyle. And uh, it's kind of like what we discussed uh, last uh, last week about the whole regrets. Even though I don't have regrets, I did lose quite a bit of money on certain items. And I think the older I get, the more I fine tune my collection, the more I feel that the items that I do have end up working out for me. They suit my lifestyle. So I have to make sure I do a ton of research. And I love seeing other items. I love seeing it bags. But until I know for sure that it's going to work out for me and my lifestyle, it's something that I won't end up adding to my collection. So uh, there is no pressure, uh, not at all. But if, had you asked me that, you know, 10 years ago, absolutely. <laughs> it would have been not pressure of social media, just just myself <laughs> and constantly buying because I don't know, I have no idea. <laughs> uh, but I think a lot of us here can, uh, we can all agree that there is something exciting about that new item, that new packaging. It's just kind of, it's such a rush, you know, but it's not always the best thing on, <laughs> it's not the best, um, it's not the best on the on the wallet. So <laughs> no, no pressure. And it's all about what ends up working out for me. And if it doesn't, then it, it might be gorgeous. It might be pretty. I might want to add it, but as long as it, ha it has to work for, for me. So no, no pressure at all. <laughs> 
All right, next question from Cindy Arrington, Shopping with a Passion and LL Nut. Have you seen the new Damien Ben jersey with the Magnolia Pink? For those of you that don't know, Louis Vuitton recently launched a new handbag called the Jersey. It is available in the Damien Ben canvas, but it also has some pops of color. The three colors that you can choose from are noir, ivory, and pink, or the Magnolia. It retails for $2,260 here in the States. And unfortunately, I don't have a picture to share with you, but I will make sure and put a link on the description box below so you guys can check it out if you want a little bit more eye candy. This bag I am dying to check out at the boutique. And even though it's over the price point that I would normally pay for a canvas bag, as most of you know, I feel that there's so many, so many things that this bag has and so many things that it offers. Uh, I love the fact that it is a tote uh, and it does have, even though it does have the two shoulder straps, it also comes with a removable shoulder strap for added versatility. So it's a very versatile bag. Uh, and the fact that the shoulder straps or the, the straps themselves are flat, would make for a very comfortable bag. Uh, I love the fact that it has a zipper for added security. I love the fact that it has microfiber interior. It does have two slip pockets. Actually, I think it has a total of three, if I'm not mistaken. And it's almost like, if you haven't checked out the, if you haven't checked out pictures about this bag, it's almost like Neverfull meets the Yenna meets the Soleil. It's almost like those three bags combined. And if you have been looking for a Neverfull and maybe the fact that it didn't have a zipper kind of turned you off, I think that this would be a a great option and again I feel that the straps kind of like with the Neverfull even though that they're they're um, you know they're flat they're a little bit thicker so I think it'll add even more comfort to the bag and the fact that it has or that's available in three different colors so it's just a regular tote. It's a Damien Ben tote. And then the middle uh, the middle part is actually leather. And then the interior matches whatever color uh, you decide to choose. So you can go for the black for very carefree. The pink with the Damien Ben just works. And the cream or the ivory, it just, it's such a beautiful color because I feel that they're very, uh, they complement each other, whichever color you end up going for. So I, I cannot wait to see this bag in action. I cannot wait to, to find out more information about it. But I think it will really be a, a, a great seller because it has so much to offer. So I'm dying to, to check out the bag. So I, I'm a fan. <laughs> I'm definitely a fan. All right, next question from Cheryl M. What are your thoughts on some YouTubers that seem to have a new bag or wallet every week? Forgive me if I'm sounding a bit judgmental. I truly don't mean to be. I do enjoy watching the unboxings, but I can't help and wonder how they do it. I guess I'm wondering if it's all about trying to keep people coming back each week. Any thoughts? I uh, love this question. And if anyone has the ability to buy a new handbag, a new wallet every week, that is awesome. More power to you. Awesome. I mean, I, <laughs> I wish I was able to do that. Unfortunately, I do not have the financial ability to do that. <laughs> uh, but I can only speak for myself. And as much as I love unboxings, I, I personally love doing unboxings myself. Uh, but for me, it's more about the actual item, like how it's really working out. Uh, because if I'm in the market for a new wallet, if I'm in the market for a new handbag or whatever it is, I want to know more if I want to know more information about the item to see if it'll end up working out for me. And even though I can go into the boutique and try it out, I like to hear opinions. I like to, you know, maybe there's something that I'm not even thinking about that I want to take into consideration that maybe this YouTuber is talking about or that YouTuber is talking about. So I can't turn a blind eye to how many views unboxings get, just in general. If you ever go on to, if you, whenever you go onto YouTube and you just check out unboxings of any type of designer, anything, the 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 views are, are huge, but, Again, as much as I love the unboxings, I prefer to know, I wanna know more information about that item. I wanna know, is it working out? Does it suit your lifestyle? Is it uncomfortable? What did you like about it? What didn't you like about it? Because we can all agree that a lot of these items are, are gorgeous. And like I said before, I applaud anyone that can buy items constantly, uh, you know? And it's a great way to get eye candy. And I get excited when I see other YouTubers unboxing items, even if the item isn't mine. <laughs> I love the joy that it brings to, to someone else, you know, but I want to know a lot more about the item. So for me, it's more about reviews than anything else. Uh, so like I said before, I can only speak for myself, but um, to each their own and uh, <laughs> kudos to anyone that can purchase items, you know, uh, constantly, but I cannot. <laughs> Next question from Yvette Romero. 
Random question, who took care of Edward while you were in London? Uh, love this. Now, darling Edward, my darling Edward, who is not here, I tried to get him on today's video, but he wasn't having it. <laughs> uh, Edward was actually, for the most part, taking care of my mom and my brother when we were in London, but we also have a dog sitter, and at any given time, I have anywhere from two to three people in my house. So he's constantly surrounded by people, uh, but it seems that my mom tends to give him the most attention She's just, you know, she cuddles with him and she plays with him all the time, but uh, he's always, always surrounded by, with people in our house. Like I said, even if Robert and I aren't home, there's always, there's constantly people here, whether it's friends or family or whoever, uh, but no, we, <laughs> he is very spoiled in the fact that he has a lot of people that pay him so much attention. So even though, you know, I try, <laughs> even though I show him, I think the most attention, it seems like he kind of just shuns me sometimes. He's, I don't know what it is. <laughs> I swear he's, he's like a, he's like a person trapped in a dog's body. <laughs> but no, uh, it was mostly my mom and my brother. Next question from Miss Pandora. How do you feel about Mulberry Lily, particularly the medium one? Every time I look at the bag, I feel tempted to buy it. I love it. Love the leather, love the not too much in your face look of the brand, but there's always that butt stopping me. I just can't jump over the resemblance with Chanel, and I definitely don't want to invest in a wannabe bag. What do you think? Am I being too paranoid? Wonderful question. Now, the Mulberry Lily, the medium one, retails for $1,225 here in the States. It's available in an array of different colors, and I am a big, big fan of Mulberry. And, you know, as much as I wanted to, when we were in London, I wanted to go into a boutique. I wanted to go to the counter to check them out because I think it was probably eight or nine months ago uh, here in the States, I went into a Mulberry store and I fell in love with the brand because, because of that same reason. They are so understated, but they have amazing, amazing quality. They're simple designs. And that's what I love about it the most. Uh, so when we were in London, I never got a chance to check out Mulberry, which, I, which really bummed me out because I was really looking forward to it. Uh, but to be honest, the, the mulberry bags in general are the brand that I saw the most of people carrying in London, you know, throughout the city when we were walking around. And it's such a carefree, uh, it's such a carefree bag. And I don't think that it's, uh, personally, I don't feel that it looks similar to a Chanel bag. Um, I can kind of see what you're talking about as far as maybe the silhouette in general, but I feel that they're still worlds apart. Uh, but as beautiful as it is and you know all the aspects that that you can appreciate about it if there is something if there if it's your gut instinct telling you maybe it's not for you I would definitely kind of hold on you know hold off on it and maybe go into the boutique try it on a few times check it out with uh, some of your essentials and see if it really ends up suiting your lifestyle because as we've said before uh, you know on Minx Monday it you know a bag can be gorgeous, a bat can be beautiful, but it might not necessarily end up working out for you. And that's really what's most important. But I don't think it's a wannabe bag at all. And Mulberry in general is just a phenomenal, phenomenal uh, handbag um, or just a, a brand in general. Their, uh, their belts, their small leather goods, they just have such amazing leather, beautiful hardware, and I feel that it really complements uh, the items that they have. So uh, definitely go, in, I would recommend going into the boutique again, trying it out, checking it out, and see if it ends up working out for you. And you will really know once you, uh, you know, once you're at the store and you, and, you're, and you have your items in the bag, you'll end up feeling, you'll end up knowing if it ends up working out for you or not. But I'm a Big, big, big fan of Mulberry in general, uh, but great question. Next question from Jen Davis. I was wondering if you could give me your thoughts on the Louis Vuitton Palace Clutch. Uh, the Palace Clutch from Louis Vuitton retails for $1,100 here in the States. It's, an av it's available in an array of different colors. And uh, unfortunately, I don't have a picture to share with you, but I will make sure and link it on the description box below so you can check it out. Now, the Palace Clutch, the best way to describe it, if you haven't seen a picture of it, it's kind of the Eva Clutch's more sophisticated sister. <laughs> it's a very versatile, uh, it's a very versatile bag. It comes with a detachable uh, crossbody strap or shoulder strap that's made out of a Keta. And uh, even though it has a similar silhouette to the Eva Clutch, it also has a little slip pocket. And I do love the type of leather that they use for, uh, for this bag. Uh, I'm a big fan of it. And <laughs> I really like how dainty it is. And it still adds uh, personality without it being too overwhelming. It has the microfiber interior and 
and I have really, um, this is a bag that I was looking at in London to see if I was going to add to my collection. I was looking at the red because I do, I, you, I mean, you all know my love for red, but I think that the pink with the monogram just works the best. Uh, but I'm a big fan of this bag. <laughs> like I said, it's very, it's very dainty. It's very classy, uh, but it still adds uh, a pop of color if you, if you were looking for that. Plus the fact that it's versatile is, is great. So again, it's a little bit more sophisticated uh, or a little bit more of a sophisticated look than the Eva clutch. Uh, but it's definitely one that, um, that I think would be great in any collection. So hopefully that was able to help. Uh, all right. Next question from Jenny Bloomquest, hopefully I said that correctly. Like you, I used to have I used to love Coach, but now I only use Louis Vuitton. But I saw a Coach bag that made my heart sing. Haven't felt like that in years. The price of the bag is actually more than one of my one of the Louis I own. I want to get it, but I feel I would be downgrading if I purchased the bag knowing that they don't hold their value. If you saw a Coach bag that made your heart sing, would you buy it? Absolutely. 100% hands down. Because you know, and I've said this before in other in other videos, even though I, I take into consideration resale value for my own personal taste, that's something that I always end up doing, especially uh, uh, because of, maybe probably because of all the bad experiences that I've had in the past of losing money. Uh, and while, you know, while resale value is important and it's something that I take into consideration, there is absolutely nothing better than going for a handbag that makes your heart sing because the resale value is great. It's, it's wonderful, especially if you end up falling out of love with the bag. But the fact that you love the bag, the fact that you will 100% enjoy the bag because it makes your heart sing, that is what is most important on any type of bag, whether it's a coach bag, a Louis Vuitton bag, Hermes, whatever kind of bag it is. So if a bag hasn't made you feel this way, um, I mean, if if this bag has, you know, has really made your heart sing and you haven't felt like this in years, I would definitely go for it. I would, I would definitely listen to your heart and, uh, who knows, it might end up being one of your all time favorite bags that you would never even, that you would never even dream about reselling because you enjoy it so much. And even if you did resell it in the future, let's say three, four years down the road, the fact that you got that much joy out of it, that's what's most important. So 100%, I would definitely go for it. Absolutely. <laughs> and I wouldn't say it's downgrading because Coach still has uh, some amazing, uh, some amazing pieces and they have great quality as well. Uh, so I would definitely go for it. Uh, all right. Next question from Cat0126. I am undecided yet. Which one? Either the Mini Pouchette or the Toiletry 15. I've watched reviews on both. They're fantastic reviews as well, but still end up confused which style fits my style because I do want to use it as a makeup pouch on my crossbody and tote bags but I also want to use it as a catch-all for my items. Help me decide, please. I like them both, but I only need to buy one. Okay, so wonderful question. Here I have uh, a little bit of eye candy since I have been failing today to provide that for you guys. Uh, here I have the toiletry pouch 15 in the monogram canvas and the mini pouch, uh, the mini pochette in the Tahitian line since I'm still using it. Both of these items are fantastic. I have done reviews on both of them. Personally, I end up preferring the mini pochette uh, just because I feel that it's a little bit more versatile. I do appreciate uh, how, you know, how structured this is. I love the fact that I can set it down and set my items in here. Uh, but unfortunately, I'm not able to fit as much as I would like in this, in the in the toiletry pouch 15. It's a great catch-all, but for me, uh, again, I go for something that's a little bit more versatile. I love the fact that the mini pochette, you can use it as a catch-all. You can use it as a, uh, as a wristlet. I've also seen people attach uh, crossbody straps to this and use this crossbody. So for me, the cost per wear is considerably less when it comes to the mini pochette than the toiletry 15, but it's all a matter of personal preference. Uh, I also do love the fact that if you are going to use the toiletry pouch as a cosmetic, uh, as a cosmetic case, then you have the wipeable interior, the washable interior that you can just, uh, you know, it's very easy. It's very carefree if you end up getting any type of stains. Now, when it comes to the mini pochette, unfortunately it does have the textile uh, lining. So so if you were to get any type of makeup on it, then, uh, you know, it'd be a little bit harder to remove because of the, because of the fabric. But regardless, even with all of that said, I still end up preferring the mini pochette. Uh, I feel that it's by far one of my all time favorite small leather goods from the fashion house because I've used it so many times in various settings 
and in various handbags. So out of the two, 100% my choice, it would be the mini pochette, but it's all a matter of which one makes your heart sing the loudest. So hopefully that was able to help. Uh, all right, next question from Vampire Zom K. Do you ever miss your coach pieces? Do you exclusively collect higher end luxury bags or do you have other bags from lower end brands that you have your eye on? I do own a few luxury pieces but still have a hard time letting go of my coach bags. Uh, great question. Do I ever miss my coach pieces? Uh, I don't and uh, I do have two, uh, do I have two? I have three left in my collection uh, and really those three coach bags I could never sell because they have such sentimental value to, to me that those I would definitely miss. But the other ones, I enjoyed them, I loved them and then you know, they, uh, after that, they, they didn't end up uh, working out for me anymore, but I still have a major, major appreciation for coach and it will always be kind of the gateway to, to, to my, <laughs> to my new, to my new collection, if you will. Uh, and do I exclusively collect higher end bags or do I have other lower end brands that I have my eye on? I actually have uh, a few other brands that I have had my eye on. And, uh, the one that I, what I've been looking for for the last couple of years, uh, and it's only because it's discontinued, they no longer make it. It is a Mark by Mark Jacobs. I think it's called the Groovy Satchel. I can't remember the exact name. Now, once upon a time, I had, uh, I think I had maybe four or five Mark Jacobs bags, and I, I love the brand. I love the, personally, I love the designer himself. Um, uh, it really made me appreciate Louis Vuitton a little bit more when he was uh, the creative designer. Uh, but, when it comes to the Mark Marie Mark Jacobs bags, I just love their, I love how carefree they are. I absolutely love the leather. And now the only reason I ended up uh, selling them was because they were a little too slouchy. And most of you know that when it comes to slouchy or handbags, that's not really uh, something for me. But even with all that said, I still want to add that, I think it's called the Groovy Satchel. I can't remember. I've seen it at, um, what's it called? I've seen it at Nordstrom Rack. And I would have purchased it had it not been some funky color that <laughs> that personally isn't for me. I think it was like a light baby blue. I don't I don't remember. But I'm looking for the black one with the gold hardware because I love that bag. And I think they retail for um, I think I've seen it like I said before at Nordstrom Rack for a hundred and. $29 or $149, something like that. I don't remember. Uh, but even though I do appreciate luxury goods uh, in general, and even though I do have mostly uh, higher end brands, I constantly go into uh, Kate Spade. I go into um, I go into Tory Burch. I like to check out their bags, and I'm constantly seeing if anything catches my eye. And I do have an appreciation for them, and I'll you know I'll check them out. But it might not be something that I want to add to my collection. But I can tell you, hands down, the moment I find that Mark by Mark Jacobs bag, it will be mine. <laughs> it will be mine because I am just madly in love with that bag. So as much as I love the luxury goods, I think I'm. I'm just a handbag addict in general. It doesn't matter if it's higher end, lower end, contemporary, what have you. It's all a matter of just bags in general. <laughs> I kind of, I did a post on Instagram once upon a time. I said, hi, my name is Minnie and I'm a handbag addict. And that is true to form. I do not discriminate against any type of designer. Not at all. <laughs> so... Mark by Mark Jacobs, I am looking out for you. <laughs> uh, all right, and the last question from Melissa. What is your opinion about the Steven Sprouse collection back in 2009? I fell in love with the flowers and I got the Speedy 30, but now 10 years later, I feel like the print is too much. And since it doesn't have the shoulder strap, I don't reach for it. Do you think I should buy a strap to, uh, do you think I should buy a strap or sell the bag? I still love the colors, but I don't feel confident using the bag. I think it's too much. Uh, wonderful question. The Steven Sprouse Roses Collection. Oh my goodness. It's funny because kind of like what I discussed last week with the Tahitian collection. Uh, I love, I love the print. Uh, I feel that on the, on the, uh, on the larger items, it was just too much. And I feel that when it comes to the Tahitian line, I really liked it because the colors just were so cohesive. But when it comes to the Roses collection from Steven Sprouse, they are, I mean, it is a major contrast because you have monogram and then you have these beautiful roses. And even though I feel that it might be too much, there is something about that collection. I have always wanted the Speedy. I always wanted it. I love the way that it looks. And I came, I came to the realization, I think it was probably maybe two years ago, because I was looking for it pre-loved, 
uh, obviously since it's been discontinued, and I was looking for a pre-loved, and I, I had the opportunity to purchase one. It was there, I, you know, I was ready to pay for it, but I think I more so liked the idea of it. I liked the color, I liked the colors, I liked how vibrant it was, but I knew in my heart of hearts that I would purchase it and it would end up just sitting on my shelf because I wouldn't use it. Now, kind of like we, we discussed earlier, if a bag is beautiful and uh, you know there's just so many things that you like about it, but if you don't feel comfortable, if you don't feel confident using the handbag, then I feel that it will end up just sitting on your shelf. And uh, the best thing to do, in my opinion, if it was me, I would end up selling the bag and putting that money towards something that you will end up using. You still love the bag. You still have an appreciation for, uh, you know, the beauty of it, but it just doesn't necessarily end up suiting your lifestyle anymore. And that that's okay because tastes change constantly. And I feel that even if you were to add a strap, I feel that it wouldn't be... Um, just by 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 what you're saying, I don't feel that it would be enough to make you feel comfortable using the bag. But that's just my two cents. Uh, if you if you're still apprehensive about it, I would still hold on to it until you know for sure that it is a bag that you want to sell uh, because you don't want to have uh, you don't want to have um, you know seller's remorse or anything like that. You want to be absolutely 100% positive that the bag is not going to work for you anymore. And that's kind of like what I felt with the uh, with the Speedy 30 multicolor. I love that bag. That bag was it was just the epitome of just what I thought what I what I wanted in a Louis Vuitton bag. That's what I thought. I thought it was just it, it just kind of checked off all the marks you know, that I was looking for in a bag. But I was so paranoid to use it. I didn't want anything to happen to it. And I felt that I kind of outgrew the multicolor phase as far as a handbag goes. I still love the the small leather goods, but I just had to think, you know, am I just going to leave it here? Is it going to sit here? And I would much rather put that money towards something else. And it was... It was a decision that took me a long time to get to because I wanted to make sure, 100% sure that I was doing the right thing. And like I said before, you'll really know when, you know, when it's time to, to end up having a bag leave your collection but hopefully that was able to help. Uh, all right, you guys, so that does it for Minx Monday q and I hope you enjoyed it. You guys had some amazing, amazing questions. And this week I have a first impression on my Givenchy Antigona. Uh, it won't be for Tuesday, it will be for Wednesday. Like I said last week, I feel that this month was just kind of all over the place. Uh, and then I am still in the process of getting together the vlog from London because I did end up vlogging while we were there, uh, but it just, it, <laughs> I didn't have my camera, as you guys know from my packing video. I didn't have my camera. I didn't have anything like that. And I feel that it's a little too shaky. Some things <laughs> are just kind of I don't know. They're not important to talk about in a vlog, I guess. So I'm in the process of getting it together. So hopefully I can get it up uh, this week, probably Thursday. Uh, but that is the lineup for this week. And thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I will see you possibly on Wednesday. I will try for Tuesday, but probably on Wednesday. But as always, you guys, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day.